Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And thank you so very much uh, for coming today and for testifying. And even more so for taking the action that you did uh, in order to report this. Because there can be no system, there can be no justice if honorable men don't stand and do what is right, even when it is not easy. And by all of your account, this was anything but easy. So thank you very much. Uh, I wonder if you could give us just a little bit more information on how, you, when you were talking to the minister's office, or you thought you were talking to the minister's office, if in fact you were talking to the minister's office, the chief of staff from the minister. Um, that's a very good question. So what I understand um, your question to be is, um, how did I, uh, you know, identify the veracity of the person's um, claim that they were the chief staff of the minister? Um, it was a 613 number identified. Um, I'd have to look back at my call logs. Um, uh, 613 being an Ottawa number, I believe it the, even maybe said like on my iPhone, something to the effect of, um, of national defense or minister's office or something to that effect. Um, she was, she spoke very confidently um, as if she was uh, a very ex experienced um, uh, public servant. Um, and uh, she did identify herself by name. Um, I didn't, I didn't know her name. I didn't look it up or anything like that. Um, but uh, it's based simply on that, um, that I had, I, I believed at that point that I was. And from your, from your perspective, you believed that she was the chief of staff to the minister of national defense. Correct. That that's correct, ma'am. Right. Um, when you were talking, I don't want you to give us any information, any details about the actual incident, but I'm wondering if you could tell us, because it has been reported uh, in the news, uh, if the incident that you were looking to report was widely known. Were there a lot of people at this incident where the misconduct occurred? Uh, Ma'am... Uh, that's a difficult question, um, and I, I, I think I'm not in a position to, to share the details at this point about uh, the complainant or the complaint or the or what occurred, um, simply because she entrusted me with her information on a confidential basis. Um, I've shared that information with the appropriate authorities, and as we all know, the matter is now being investigated by the National Investigation Service. Um, so I don't uh, I, I don't feel comfortable and I don't think it's within my purview to get into that, uh, which may potentially um, uh, put the uh, complaint in an uncomfortable situation. Would you feel comfortable letting us know if in your opinion and your understanding of the in incident, you were the only one who could have reported this incident? Or to your understanding, may there have been other individuals who would have had the same duty and obligation as you did to report? Ma'am, as I was not actually there at the uh, um, to witness the incident, um, what has been relayed to me, there is a potential that yes, there there could be other people that uh, could have witnessed it and reported it. But again, um, I don't want to be in a place of conjecture where I'm uh, inferring that um, that is indeed the fact. Uh, but um, there, there is the potential that um, there was other people who um, could have seen it and, and could have reported. Thank you very much. Could you also let us know if you felt that you were um, pressured in any way uh, in this or other instances to not come forward and report this type of misconduct? Um, Ma'am, that's a difficult question to answer again. Um, me personally, like my personal conviction as an officer of the Canadian Armed Forces, um, I will put service, the service and my service members above my, my own needs and safety. 
Um, so in that regard, I don't feel um, as though I've been pressured to not report things. Uh, and I can say with conviction that I have never not reported um, things. But um, with respect to uh, is there pressure to not report things? Um, again, I think that would be that that would be um, you know a juxtaposition on my part. Uh, um, getting into the heads of others, whether they wanted to pressure me or but not. But you did mention that you were, in fact, berated for uh, a different incident, but for for pressing forward to uh, to investigate m misconduct and report in another situation. Uh, yes, ma'am, and I I can provide. Um, uh, I've got sort of a scripted sort of so I can keep it succinct for you here. Um, so as it was reported to me, um, there was a Zoom call uh, for uh, career management of Naval Technical Officers, of which over 100 people were on the Zoom call, um, including a large number of officers, mainly officers, including senior officers at the rank of uh, Captain Navy, which is the equivalent of a colonel in the Army. Uh, a senior officer made a comment about a female member's room which he could see in the background, he referred to it as her red room, um, which many on the call took to be a uh, reference to the movie Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, several other members in that Zoom call followed up uh, to echo this comparison and make uh, inappropriate sexual remarks. Um, there were many women on this call. Um, one female CAF member made a complaint to me about this issue, which I reported up my chain because in this instance, she did want to be identified. And I also entered it into the OPTAS, the Operation Honor um, Tracking and, uh, and Analysis System. Um, as I understand it, someone else from another unit also made a complaint about this incident. However, there was no entry in OPTAS about it. Mine was the only entry. Um, right. and Thank the you very much Thank for your courage to put country above of everything else. Thank you very much.